Uh, a novella as much about the sharp bite of reality as about the allures of living in reverie, a dream life follows the Armstrong family as they move from New York to a chateau of fairy tale proportions in Australia. And while Alice Armstrong, the novella's protagonist, is originally drawn to a Mrs. Dalloway-esque existence of managing her new home, she increasingly finds herself trapped within the opulence and frivolity that originally enticed her. Drawing on tropes of the bourgeois novel with its grandiose estate, family drama and class relations, Mersud explores the limits of confined spaces and the dynamics that emerge within them. Described by writer Helen Gardner as a perfect frolic of a book, A Dream Life is a balanced take on fantasy, deception and dissatisfaction all within the domestic realm. Claire and Chris, thank you so much for joining us this evening at the library. Thank you, Alice. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Thanks so, very much. Yeah, and thank um, you for that beautiful introduction. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm really thrilled to be here having this conversation with Claire, and I'm particularly thrilled to be uh, doing it by way of the American Library in Paris. Although I know that Claire and I are both sorry not to actually be at the American Library in Paris. Um, and uh, I, I, I only learned after agreeing to do this that Claire had written this uh, novella, Dream Life, at the American Library. Uh, as it happens, I wrote some of my own last book there as well. I lived in Paris for a couple of years and, and uh, spent a lot of time there. So I am uh, thrilled, to, um, thrilled to be doing this with the library. And I understand that, it, that the event does come with a later invitation to come in person and I will be taking them up on that. Um, I thought maybe we'd just start there, uh, 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 how you came to uh, write this at the library, uh, what you were doing there, et cetera. It's a, it's a good question. You know, it was, it was actually a long time ago. Um, and Chris, I just, again, how thrilled I am to be chatting with you. Um, if only, as you say, we'll do it again, we'll do it again yeah. in situ. I can't wait. Yeah. Um, but, but this, you know, this is such a gift. It's, um, it's a long time ago. I wrote this this novella. I actually wrote. So I I published in um, two thousand one with impeccable timing. I believe it came out on the um, twelfth or thirteenth of September two thousand one. Um, a uh, book of novellas uh, called The Hunters. Um, and 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 there are two novellas, and they were supposed to be three, and this was the third novella. So so um, but I but I never showed it to my agent and I never showed it to my editor. And um, I put it in a drawer and here it is um, sort of miraculously seeing the light of day uh, over 20 years later and well, 20 and a bit. And, but, but, um, but, but I was, I, so I had embarked on this sort of what I saw as a triptych um, and I, it was a time before children now, my uh, our daughter is our daughter is uh, is twenty and our son is eighteen. So a time before children is is well, I guess it's a dream life. Um, and and um, and in that time before children, uh, when everything many things one many many wonderful things have happened, but anything then still seemed possible. Life seemed fully ahead. And and my dream since childhood had been to um, live in Paris and write, live in Paris and write. That was that was what I always wanted to do. Um, Mavis Gallant managed to do it for a lifetime, but but I managed to do it for three months, um, and uh, and and since that time have not actually lived and written in Paris. But we we took our savings and rented a little apartment. We were um, talking about um, just before we sort of joined the group um, on the Rue Claire. It, it was a little one bedroom apartment, and uh, and I walked every day to the. I joined the American Library and I walked every day to the American Library and I. And I worked there, and it was um, for three months. It was it was absolutely blissful. And I imagined that that was the first of many such times, and uh, that you know a year or two later I would be back for six months, and after that maybe for several years. Yeah, no, not yet, not yet. But but next year our son will go to college, so you never know. Well, my oldest is five, and I I, I can say that a time before children feels unimaginable to me. So I can only imagine how, how it'll be, uh, you know, 15 years from now. Um, so it seems to me somehow very typical of the way that the creative process works 
that um, you would go to Paris and then write this book that is set in Australia. Um, uh, I, 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 when I was in Paris, I was writing something that was set very, it, very much in New York. It had no Paris in it. And then the moment I got back to New York, all I wanted to do was write stuff uh, that was set in Paris. Uh, but maybe you can speak a little bit about the setting, uh, about maybe your history with Australia and um, how you came to be writing this yes. particular story. Yes. So, so, and I would, I would just interject. I mean, as you're saying, there's, I, I'm reminded of, 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 there's a, there's a little riff in Thomas Bernhardt, um, and I, and I discovered, by the way, Thomas Bernhardt in the American Library. I was, I was looking for Bernanos on the bookshelf. And somehow the, the slim volumes of Bernhardt just next door attracted my attention. Um, but, but Bernhardt has a thing about how he hates the city and how he hates the country. And the only time he's really happy is on the train in between the city and the country. And, um, and, I, and I sort of feel as though, you know, you, you, there, is some, there is some imaginative possibility about the place that you're not. Um, you know, that, that it, it somehow seems easier to write about the place that you're not than the place that you are. Um, which somehow to me makes sense, but but the Australian so so and I would I would also say that 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 envisaged trip, triptych that became a diptych was for me about um, there were a number of sort of overlapping themes. One was um, the the domestic employment, right? So the relation of, of people to others in domestic employment, um, and the other was displacement. It was you know this sort of displacement was 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 kind of uppermost in my mind as I as I wrote them. So in that sense, to be displaced when writing it made some sense. Um, but it but but Australia was not a totally weird and random choice um, as a as a place to set the novella. I, I was a child in Australia. My father was French and my mother was Canadian, um, Anglophone Canadian. People always say, "Oh, you're French Canadian," but I'm not French Canadian. I was French and Cana I am French and Canadian. Um, and, um, and we, and we, from my father's work, um, moved in 1971 to, um, to Sydney. So my childhood, I, I was, um, is that right? Am I getting that right? Or was it 1970? Anyway, I was four, I turned five there. And, and then we stayed un until, uh, the end of 75, December 75. And so, so, um, so in a way, what I this this novella is about that that time in Australia and and in Sydney in particular, and and is in some way um, trying to imagine some version of of it's a, it's fiction, but trying to that, imagine some version of my mother's experience, um, because because you know in those days and maybe still in some instances, or maybe it's it, it works the other way in marriages too now, but it didn't much then. You, as a wife, you you got you 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 went along. You just your husband got some position and you went along, and you didn't necessarily sign up. You know, I always think my my mother in law, my father in law became a minister when he was like sixty, and suddenly she was a vicar's wife. You know, she did not sign up for that, but suddenly you know you have to make tea for whoever comes to the door, and um, I feel so that's that's that, that I was I was thinking about that about my mother's experience. So. Yeah, it's interesting uh, you say that because I, I was struck by your saying that you'd written this uh, before having children, since obviously um, the 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 responsibilities or challenges of of motherhood and of playing this particular role uh, that is weirdly both private and public facing and um, is a big uh, part of uh, what the novella is about. Yeah, and it, I mean, I and I think that that that's. Certainly, in those days, that was your main job for m most women. I mean, still at that point, you know, and so you, 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 and nobody, you know, what's your social like for the character in the novella? For Alice, um, the domestic, the people who are employed to help in various capacities in and around the house are are almost her sort of um, most, her closest social, uh, adult social contacts. You know, she's with the kids, and then. The people who were paid to be there. So, so uh, the the setup, but just to say a bit more, is they arrive in Australia and they rent sight unseen this enormous estate, uh, which they jokingly refer to as Chateau Deeds. Uh, the deeds being the kind of um, 
nouveau riche uh, family that have had this thing built. Um, and uh, if I'm right, the, every, the entire novella takes place on the grounds of Chateau Deeds. Yeah. Uh, there isn't any kind of going into town. The husband reports back on things that have happened at work. The, the kids report back on things that have happened at school. But um, it has this sense of constriction to it. Um, and it's not, it's not, it's not, it doesn't seem like, uh, as you, you, you say that, you know, you were writing this uh, in part out of your experience of, of being there at this time, but it, it, it's, it doesn't seem like um, rendering what Australia as such or Sydney as such was like during this period is part of what you're trying to do in sort of a, in sort of a realist way. There aren't sort of descriptions of being out in the streets of the city or anything like that. No, no. I, I mean, I, you know, I think um, the, 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 I, I, I often have in my uh, head, I think I had, I think I used it as the epigraph for, uh, for the Empress Children, a, a line from Antony Pohl, um, where one of the characters says, it's, it's not what happens, it's what you think happens that matters. And, um, you know, the, the, uh, the, that you, you, you know, it isn't, um, it isn't really, like, I feel for, the, the question is not, you know, how, this is, this was, you know, when we were moving to, to, to Boston and Cambridge, and I was like, oh, it's not New York. And, but the reality is, you know, do my friends in New York go to the opera every night or, or you know, to the, to the loveliest restaurants or, you know, are they shopping on Fifth Avenue? No, you know, they're, they're, they're um, at that time, they were, you know, changing diapers and, um, and worrying about whether there was enough milk in the fridge. So, so it's what, that's what, that's what your life is. And, 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 I, and I, it's true. Uh, there could be a very different novel about, I, I mean, there's, there was a lot of political stuff to write about in, in early 70s uh, Australia. Um, and and that, does not, um, that doesn't really enter into Alice Armstrong's uh, world, which is really small. Her world is very small, even though it's quite social. And that's one of the things, um, you know, which I actually distinctly remember. And I, at the time, I'm, you know, because then we returned to North America and, and my parents' social life stopped. So, so I wasn't ever sure whether whether that sort of social world was was an Australian thing or a that moment in life thing or a, in the same way that I can't tell whether being this age now and finding the whole world so dismaying is because I'm this age or because the world is really dismaying. I think the world's pretty dismaying, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's 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 also because they've they've moved you know all the way across the world and then moved to uh this odd house that is in some ways sort of not typical of even where they are and they're sort of they're closed in on it there's kind of this this double sense of unreality um and uh this title a dream life there's a lot of resonances there but but part of it is when Alice arrives and she's making sort of some choices, there's this sense of, of well, this, this is this period where I'm in this, in this dream life. I'm living in this house that is not the kind of house I would, never ha I would ever have. So I'm gonna, and I'm gonna be entertaining in these ways that I would never be entertaining. And so I would do things that I would never think of at home, like have live-in staff and uh, things like that. Um, and then the, the and, and I'm, I'm interested, I, I, I don't know if, if we have a lot of people in the audience who are themselves um, uh, expats, um, but uh, that sense of, when you go somewhere for maybe a year, you can treat it as a as a time off from your life. But if you go any longer than that, at a certain point, you have to say, wherever I'm doing this, this is my real life. And that seems to be part of what the process of this book is about. Yes, absolutely. And I think, um, and, and I absolutely agree. I think, I think there's this, there, there is, uh, uh, I don't know if a year exactly is the cutoff, but but right around that time, I mean, there's some sense you can't keep um, you you can't keep reality in abeyance uh, indefinitely, and 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 it is um, you know I, I I'm I'm reminded of another of a truism 
uh, of, in, that I that was told me in my youth and that I that I like to repeat, except that young people now doesn't mean anything to them, which um, which was that all all stories are are either Star Trek or Gilligan's Island, but they've never heard of Gilligan's Island now. So, um, um, but you know, it's either it's either somebody comes to visit or somebody takes a trip, right? And 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 there is with the the when somebody comes to visit that changes the community. And when somebody takes a trip, that that opens possibility for the person taking the trip, right? So, so you can be somebody different. You can, you know, dye your hair and change your name, and um, you know, dance wildly at parties when you always were a wallflower, and 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 you have this freedom, but because it seems unreal. But it, but but so in this way, Alice in this book, you know, Alice comes in, and she is she would never have been some she she was never somebody who employed anybody, let alone a sort of fleet of of you know caterers and gardeners and 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 live-in housekeepers and so on and 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 suddenly she she sort of leaps into that role as if she were on stage in the school play but but at some point at some point that becomes untenable i mean i guess there are people like that the um the fake was he a fake rothschild there's some people for whom it's not it's yeah. not untenable like they can make a whole go of it but for most of us oh, yeah. clark rockefeller there was, Rockefeller, that was sorry. Yeah, yeah, so that I don't know how much you want to get into the uh, um, the 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 plot itself, but there is a uh, a fabulous somewhat of that sort in the in the book, um, and I worry about about spoiling, as they say. So so, um, but uh, it I I I I thought it was really nice the way that um, that title of Dream Life sort of redounded as you. Uh, uh, as you move along, um, and and it's almost like a, uh, like a, a cautionary tale of what happens if you allow yourself to live too long outside of your own life and the, the challenges you might have in, in getting back in. In getting back in. But, but, but for, I think also, I, as I imagine it, although it, it, that Alice is actually a little bit jealous, right, of, of this other character, that she... Um, that she she that, that that somehow the the fantasy has proven liberating um, in a way that for Alice the fantasies have proven constricting um, and and problematic and and at various moments reality kind of comes in um, there's 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 an issue with the fellow who takes the kids to school and you know that that um, that that reality kind of gets reality keeps coming back whereas if you if if you if you float sufficiently butterfly like um along then maybe you can skip reality altogether you know? right there's um uh a wonderful line in um in didion who i've been rereading a little bit recently since her death um in goodbye to all that her sort of classic leaving new york on being young in New York essay, uh, where she says, and and it's wonderful to think that she was, I don't know, 27 or something when she's saying this, and she feels so um, jaded, so jaded. By everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but she says, uh, this is the time that I realized that when I realized that not all the promises will be kept. Um, and there's this sense of um, coming to understand that there are actually consequences. To things and that you can't float above things and this 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 issue with the um, with with the man who's driving the children to school is is sort of is sort of that moment of a realization of um, uh, this is my real life there are real responsibilities here and there are real consequences to my not meeting my responsibilities right and and I think kids you know kids have a way of bringing that home to one, whether directly or through one sense of parental responsibility, you know, I mean, I, um, when I think back, you know, to, to my own dream life in the time in Paris, there, there certainly was a sense that, you know, I had, we had budgeted a certain amount of money to be in Paris, like, we could spend every penny of it, because, you know, whatever, like, um, and, and there, there was no sense of, of forethoughtfulness of kind of looking ahead beyond the immediate. Um, and and frankly, no no thought for anyone but ourselves in that time. Um, and and I think you know the, the the kid the kid thing that that really if Alice didn't have kids she'd probably have a very different uh, well they might not have rented that house um, but 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 in any event I think you know the 
the relation would be so different because it's 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 um you know back to that sort of physical constriction that, that i mean but also this responsibility you know that the kids are largely not there the kids are at school all day but but the one thing she's in charge of you know the one thing she's in charge of is making sure that they're okay yeah um, yeah yeah um i want to shift gears uh entirely now um it, so so i didn't i actually didn't realize when uh before you just told everyone now that um this had been written quite so long ago um but uh it's one of the things that's interesting about it is that it feels like it could have been written at sort of at any moment there is a bit of timelessness to it and a sense that uh, in part because it's about someone who was living this period out of time in this this dream life and you mentioned um the the idea that in in the early 70s that you you could have done something that was about these the uh social change or political events that were going on and things like that but that's not um what you were doing and and um that circa at 1999 2000 uh seemed pretty standard I think for writers of literary fiction and 20 plus years later it feels a lot less so there 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 uh seemed to be a lot more um in the way of uh sort of cultural pressure for writers to be engaging in the political moment or in various social questions things like that and I I wanted to uh, I was going to ask it in the framework of your decision to write something like this, uh, but now I have to rethink the question slightly, uh, given that that I, I, I now know you, you 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 wrote this back then. But 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 I, I wonder what you think of those uh, pressures and whether they're you even care about them yourself as a writer or it just doesn't even reach you when you're sitting down to write. Um, I, you know I think. We, we could have this conversation for a couple hours probably um there's a lot there's a lot to sort of think about and unpack and i i don't i don't have a sort of straightforward or simple answer but it it has been really interesting to me as you know i teach creative writing um and and to find in the i would say it's happened in the last five years that that um to my dismay i would say that my students uh when they come into the class understand understand fiction in a utilitarian way uh, as purposeful and its purpose is a message um and and so um that is a really big shift uh culturally uh that seems fairly general and and i guess i am um, i guess I, I i i struggle with that because i feel messages are rarely clear i i, I remember uh, in life right the message is rarely so clear and 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 i remember a a, a middle-aged fellow saying oh i i he was a business guy and he said i you know the reason i i i love to uh i love to read novels is because in life it's so hard to figure out what people are like but but you know in 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 fiction it's so clear and then i felt like I, I didn't say, but I'm like, what fiction are you reading? Because, because, because it's not so clear. And it, just as in life, we, you know, we don't meet somebody who has gruff but has a good heart written mm -hmm. across their forehead. You know, we we have to figure out by reading signs and interpreting things, and we misinterpret and 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 we miscommunicate, and you know, we 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 go through, and people are on balance. You know, there there's some combination of things. Very few people are 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 uniformly one thing or another so so i i feel that that fiction that sets out to uh to give a message is going to struggle in that way uh with 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 actually illuminating reality because reality doesn't accord with the messages we want to give so I, you know i keep in my head and I try to, I try to, I do repeat to the students whether, you know, whether they take, take how they feel about it, I don't know. But um, the line from Chekhov, it's not my job to tell you that horse thieves are bad people. It's my job to tell you what this horse thief is like. And, and, and I feel like if we as writers do that job and, and, and try to give the horse thief in the round, then, then 
then it's for a reader to have their own opinion about, uh, uh, you know, about it. And, and, and obviously there are political choices in what we write about, which stories we choose to tell and so on and so forth. And those are in a broader and, and smaller P political, right? Um, but, but it seems to me that then the artist's obligation has to be um, to the work itself and to the rendering, to the complexity of the rendering uh, on the page. That, that's kind of where I come down, I think. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. And I, I find it even in, in journalism too, um, the, um, there, there is a, there's a classic style of, of narrative journalism profile where you sort of give the subject uh, the rope to hang him or herself, you know, um, where it's all laid out in, in, in these sort of just direct quotes from the subject and at the end, um, that person's, um, there was a, uh, there's a there's a classic New Yorker profile of Hemingway from the late 50s, and I'm forgetting who it was, but anyway, he just comes off as as um, uh, completely uh, past it, and and but but there's never a judgment by the writer where uh, uh, she says this man is like a shell of who he was in 1927, um, and. Now, when you publish those sorts of things, people get very upset and want to know why you didn't say in the piece, this is a bad person, you know? But you want to say, every fact you have that makes you think he's a bad person, you have because I put it on the page. <laughs> you know, that's, <clears throat> that, and that, that's, that's what the writer does and then allows you to come to the judgment. But they, 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 they it, it's, it's, it's so I, I find it as a as a magazine editor in, in, in journalism, uh, yeah. for sure. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I also think there's there's a real question. Uh, this is I mean, it's interesting to be talking about something that has been in a, a proverbial desk drawer for for 20 years. Um, but it's not just that things are supposed to have a clear political message, but that it's supposed to relate very specifically to the moment we're in right now. Um, and so you've got certain writers of the um, Ali Smith and Knausgaard and various people who write very, very quickly and, 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 and are, you're almost getting it or Sheila Hetty or someone like that, where you're, you're, you get the, you get the novel uh, within a few months of the events that are being described in the novel. And it's such a weird uh, kind of echo chamber experience because that has not been uh, historically how I mean, it's it's such a slow medium. Yeah, yeah. And even so, the 19th century novelists who who were really engaging with society and were very good about that stuff in the way that George Eliot or Tolstoy or someone uh, was, um, they're always they're writing about the society 30 years before. Um, uh, they're highly engaged in it, you know, and 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 there is a real political element to it, but it's not they couldn't possibly have written something that was sort of like a pamphlet about the moment they were in. No, and, but I think what's, what's um, you know, what, what I, I totally agree with you. And what I find strange about it is um, that no matter how fast you turn something around, the, the world is moving faster still. And so you're, you're, it's like a planned, a planned historicity or a planned obsolescence or something like you're, you're not actually going to be six months from the time it appears you might catch the end of uh, of some immediacy when it's published six months after the events but but sort of a year from then it's it's it, and maybe that's just you know i i've written in a it, it, at some point in an essay about this feeling of hurtling you know because we're all we're all standing as it were with our mouths open under a niagara falls of of, of information that's, that's, that's just drowning us. Um, and, and there's this sense of, uh, of a sort of crazy hurtling, which the pandemic did something to, to sort of slow down a bit. But, but, it, but I guess it seems to me, um, again, I, I, I don't feel as a writer, I don't know about you, but I don't feel as a writer that need, right? I don't actually feel, I feel that, Look, we live in, in an increasingly visual culture, a largely visual culture. You know, we now see on our phones in a day more photos than were taken in, you know, between 1850 and, you know, 2005, right? We see them, we see just so, we're, we're, we're this barrage of images. 
So what is it that that writing and in particular fiction can do that other things can't do, right? What is it, what is it, why would you, why would you do in fiction something that could be done better in a, in a, in a documentary or a short film or a, or a podcast or a um, panel discussion or a, you know, um, and it seems to me that, that, that fiction is a, is a place for, for something more reflective um, and, and hopefully deeper um, that, that actually requires time. I'm, I'm a great, I'm a great believer in our animal natures and, and in, 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 you know, in actually the, the, the tactile exp uh, experience of holding a book, of, 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 of turning the pages, of, of, you know, that thing where you, when you read something in, in a book and you know, I don't know about you, I know exactly where on a page, it was in the bottom left mm -hmm. paragraph, you know, about a third of the way through the book and I can find it. <clears throat> if I read something on a screen, I have no, I have no, I don't, I just don't take it in in the same way. It isn't because, because I'm an animal. And so I need, I need a physical experience. That's how it imprints in me. And I, and I, and I, I realize I'm also a believer in the letter writing the whole nine yards, you know me, but, 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 but in that sense, I feel as though um, if people are chasing for some immediate relevance in fiction, maybe, maybe that's a doomed undertaking maybe the novel becomes like poetry something for a smaller contingent than in its heyday in its 20 i mean that's a tragedy to me i feel as though um you know i, I want everybody to read maybe if fewer people are reading but but don't give up on what the novel can do don't give up on what the novel does best i think yeah i i i agree um uh so Speaking of sort of like preferring letter writing and 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 reading physical books and things like that, um, do you do you find it a challenge to write about a present moment um, in which everyone is sort of looking at their phones all the time? I mean, one of the challenges that I think a novelist is faced with is is if uh, um, obviously one of the major subjects of the novel and a thing that it can capture or, or, or approach capturing that other forms can't is interiority and consciousness. And if, if people are actually losing their interiority because of this, you know, um, it's very difficult. It, it, another way of thinking about it is it's very difficult for a novelist to represent um, the kind of world where people don't read novels. Um, I yes, yes, I know. I know what you mean. I mean, I think, I think um, it's it's interesting. It's interesting. I use because now I, you know, again back to the student. What I feel as though the the only um, pulse I have on the on the contemporary is 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 university students. I have graduates, you know, graduate students as well. But um, and and I feel there's an evolution from 18 to say 28 that is pretty significant, even for people, because you know we've I've now witnessed latterly if the iPhone is the big change, right? It isn't it isn't email or computers or the internet. It's the iPhone, and and it's it's having it's having all of that as an extension of your hand, and um, and and that you know that that I think is what has changed, and that is a mode of communication and and texts and Snapchat and you know that that has changed. Um, and and it's striking how little the students want to write about that. It's striking how little that enters their fiction. What I would say is that you know ten years ago people would write stories just without it. It didn't come in at all. Right. And that now um, now it's more integrated as a as a as a tool like the telephone, or else, um, or or else as a as a sort of AI or or science fictiony or virtual worldy subject, right? But 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 not so much, frankly, you know, not to be not to be, um, not in the inanity in which it exists in our daily lives, right? Not in the like, well, you know, while I was waiting for my my whatever to heat up in the oven, I, I looked through 3000 uh, TikTok video. No, like they, that isn't in the stories, no. Yeah. Because there's nothing to say. I mean, it's literally pissing your life away, right? <laughs> so, I mean, what is there to say about it? Yeah. 
except I suppose the sort of Jamesian tragedy of having realized at the end of your life that you spent there watching TikTok videos. Yeah, I don't know if, I, I mean, I sort of don't, I, the thing I worry about sometimes is, is, is um, well, there's plenty to worry about, but I worry about many things, but, I, but, 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 but some sense that uh, uh, I, I, I've, I've been reading, I've been reading for the, for the column that I write for Chris at Harper's. Um, I've been, I've been reading um, Gary Indiana's uh, pieces, you know, he's got, has a collection coming out and, and, and they are, they, they, they are a, a, a fabulous astringent, like they're, they're so, he's, a, he's, he is sharp, sharp tongued and, um, and, and his, and his, uh, his rapier wit, but also his rage is turned against the entire, even now against the entire capitalist machine, which I feel, you know, most people have kind of given up raging mm -hmm. against that machine. Um, so it's, it's, it's sort of great to hear him rage and, um, or read him rage and, 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 and the degree to which the TikTok videos are a, a co-opting um, I guess I, it dismays me how little a younger generation seems even to entertain that notion. That, that's that's you know that, that that even the fringes have been have been incorporated into the machine. So you, you have to get pretty far out there before somebody's saying, "Hey, wait a minute! Hey, wait a minute!" You know, yeah. I, I don't buy into this. Yeah, I I um uh we we ran uh a, a while back a, a piece by martin scorsese um about fellini and along the way he took a couple of really sort of passing shots about at, at marvel movies and things like that and the response online was was really incredible but it's to me it's 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 remarkable how many people culturally feel this really strong affiliation and ownership over these things that are obviously these enormous corporate juggernauts. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. I feel like my thing made some noise. I don't know how to stop it. No, I, I, I think you're all right. Okay. Um, but since you brought up the column uh, and we can do a little plugging, you are, you are a monthly uh, uh, books columnist for Harper's Magazine. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about your critical work uh, and, and how that relates to your fiction writing and whether you kind of think of it as all the same project or something that is you know clearly separated out for you so yeah thank you chris it's been i mean it, it chris invited me how long ago was it this i'm i'm, I'm now writing it's my second year this yeah. year will be my second year of, of of doing a monthly books column for harper's magazine it is a, it is an honor and a joy and um and um you know i i have written uh, a lot of fiction writers don't write criticism, but I've written criticism um, all of my adult life. Um, when I was young and lived in London, um, I, 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 I hesitate to say it's how I paid the bills, but it's how I earned what little money I earned. Um, and um, I, remember, I remember discovering I was paid at the time 72 pounds to write a book review for the TLS. And I remember reading um, in Virginia Woolf's diaries that she had been paid, I think, 70 pounds to write something for the TLS. And I thought that, that, that does not represent the same, that does not represent the same payment, but um, <clears throat> there, you know, over the 50 or 80 or whatever it was years uh, between us. Um, but, I, but I, 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 I do think of, you know, I, th I think, okay, one of the things I would say is as, as somebody writing about books, um, I think when I was young, I understood a critic to be somebody who opined, um, but that, I really don't see that as my job. I, I, I see as my job to, to try as best I can to figure out what somebody is trying to do and, and then to try to respond to how I, whether I think it's doing that, if that makes sense. Rather than, yeah. I, I, I get very annoyed with people who, who are writing reviews where they're basically saying, this isn't my kind of thing. Right. It's actually similar to, to what you were talking about before about politics and fiction writing in the sense that the job is not to render a judgment necessarily. The job is try, to try to see the thing that is in all of its complexity. Totally. And, 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 maybe, and maybe, you know, and maybe as a reader, you're wrong, right? Like maybe you, 
maybe you understand, maybe what you think somebody's doing is not what they were trying to do. And, and, and we both know as, as writers who've been reviewed that that happens pretty often and is, can be frustrating. But, but I think um, there's nothing more, um, you know, I had a, I had a, a very nice, um, I mean, ultimately very nice review of my book of essays in the New York Times from, by Frank Bruni, but, but, but the tenor of the review was, I expected popcorn and this is consomme. And I felt like, well, okay, that's not my problem. I, I didn't, didn't say on the cover of the book popcorn, like that, whatever. So, so, and I think that's a very, um, I think that's a very common reviewing um, mindset. So, so I'm, I'm trying to do something. And, 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 and then, and then the other thing I would say is for me, then I'm always learning, right? Then if you take it that way, if you approach it as what's somebody trying to do and how's that working, you're always learning as a writer from that experience. It's not, it's, it's not, it, it's just a different process and, and always interesting, always interesting. I feel like there are people whose, whose work is, is super, super different from mine and, 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 um, you know, and, and I could never do what they do. And I, and I'm, and I'm, and it's like, I'm taking the radio apart and trying to figure out how it works. And that's, um, you know, I love that. Do you find yourself at this stage in your career still, um, I guess the, the, the simplest way to put it, still open to influence? Is there still stuff you read where you say, this really excites me in a way where I'd like to try and take my writing in this direction? Or do you feel like you are the, the writer you are and, and your job is to um, you look wherever you're looking? And... It's a good question. I don't know if I can answer. I mean, I, I, I think we're always um, open on some level to influence, you, you know, old dogs though we may be. Um, but, but, I, but, but I find any question about how I think of myself really difficult because, you know, I, when, when you're actually writing, you're, so, so, so when I was a kid, I remember I wrote a story in like sixth or sixth grade, fifth, fifth, fifth grade about a, a grown up who was a writer. I wanted to be a writer. We wrote a story, short story about a grown up who was a writer. And she went into her um, writing room and looked up and hours had passed. And, um, and uh, it was like, she'd been in a dream or on another planet. And I remember my teacher like writing in the margin, like, what does this mean? What, do you, you don't really think that somebody who's writing a story disappears, do you? Um, but actually when I'm writing, I look up and hours have passed and, and, and I haven't been thinking about an audience or about a, uh, uh, I, it's literally like I'm, it, 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 the, best, the best example, the, the best thing I can compare it to is when our, our son was small, he would, he would um, when he was about sort of two, he, he would gather all this stuff in the middle of the living room floor, Lego and, you know, pots and pans and wooden spoons and um, little toys and he would make a little world and then he and he would do that for hours and then he'd come away and say you can't touch it and you'd be like like but no you can't touch it it's just how it's supposed to be you gotta leave it and, and and I feel like writing is sort of like that and so for me at least so so all the questions about about what are you thinking or what are you it's like no no, no I'm just doing I'm just doing I'm like a kid right. doing I would say just to circle back to the subject at hand and then and we're going to open it up to questions um, it's a dream life. Um, and I, 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 I'm capable of reading almost anything as having some metafictional component to it, because I think that there's this element of self-reflection and almost any sort of really interesting work of fiction. But I was thinking that often while reading this, is that there, this sense of, of a person having arrived in this place that is a little strange and feels kind of imaginary and then being forced to, uh, situate herself in it and figure out what's going on uh and the, also the way that the story it it takes a little while for for us uh to get a sense of what the story of the story is going to actually be and it has there's a sense that alice herself isn't quite sure what kind of story am i in right now yeah 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 i absolutely and i and i isn't that i'm glad because isn't that like <laughs> life Right? Yeah, Isn't that exactly. like life? Like, what story am I in? You hope it's a good one. 
Who yeah. knows? Um, okay, well, maybe why don't we let Alice come back on and, and open it up to questions. Chris, Chris. Thank you so much, Chris, for fantastic questions. Um, if, you, if you joined late uh, or you just joined, you have joined a conversation between Chris, Leha and Claire Masu talking about Claire's, among other things, uh, new novella, A Dream Life, um, that she wrote a long time ago, but has just published and she wrote it uh, in large part at the American Library in Paris, which is why we're so delighted to be hosting Claire and also Chris, who also is a writer at the American Library in Paris. Um, so Chris, thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll bring you back on at the end for more thanks. Um, okay, so we are now moving to the question section of the event. So if you do have a question for Claire or indeed Chris, I mean, maybe we can ask him a question or two um, towards the end, but please go ahead and post them in the chat. Um, Claire, we have a question from Karen. Oh, first I would like to remark on the vastly international nature of tonight's audience, which is one of maybe the only delightful thing about Zoom. Um, we have people from Connecticut, America, um, Paris, Denver, Colorado, Michigan, uh, Virginia, Phoenix, Arizona. Someone is tuning in from Sydney in true A Dream Life spirit, uh, Cambridge, England, and Audrey, um, uh, and, the, and Paris, Manhattan, and Athens. So fantastic. We have a question uh, from Karen, who, picking up on what you said about letter writing, asks, can you talk more about letter writing, your letters, reading other people's letters, famous people's letters? That's the, that's the comment. Yeah, I, I, I love them all. So, so I, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you sit, I mean, certainly reading, it's like reading people's diaries, but, but in a way, um, well, you want to read their diaries and their letters, right? Um, yeah. in conjunction so you know what you know what they're saying in private and then what they say to somebody else but 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 the letter the, i mean just as a as a as a as an entity right the letter is a private document right um and a personal address right mm -hmm. so it's written for one person or maybe two or three people but it's written directly from from me as it were to you alice um and and i'm going to spend an hour or maybe three hours or maybe come back to it over three weeks and i'm and i'm going to be telling you things that are precisely the opposite of what's most urgent and immediate in a in a in a moment right and um and and it's a type of when i go back my mother was a, a wonderful letter writer and i have from her um boxes of letters that she wrote and i have from my um, grandparents, both maternal and paternal, um, the letters that my parents saved that they wrote to them. And, um, and I, um, it's really amazing. Uh, you, 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 you know, somebody in this very intimate way, when you read a, a whole bunch of letters, you know, them, you know, them by their handwriting, which is something I really miss. You know, I have friends from, from when I was mm. 10 years old, who, if I got a letter in the mail, handwritten by them, I would know before I saw the return address who it, who it was. That's, I mean, that's like a fingerprint. Um, but, but, but it isn't just that, it's, it's syntactically and, and, and also the, the, the idiosyncratic and particular nature of attention or, or, or ways of expressing, you know, and, 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 and that's something, that I also feel that, that it's about the, the dignity of the individual and of, and of, of individual private experience, right? We live in a world where where things are posted um, to a bunch of anonymous people on a on a on a platform where you don't know who's seeing stuff, and and you're doing it for an anonymous public. And this is the opposite, right? You're taking time, hours out of your 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 life to to convey to somebody things that are possibly entirely interior. I mean, people write letters that say nothing about even what room they're in, but just about mm. their emotional state. Mm. Um, and, and, and it is specifically tailored to and an, an addressed to an individual person, mm. right? And, and, and that's saying my small life is valuable and your small life is valuable. I think you're so valuable that I'm giving you this attention and time and this, mm. this part of my, of my soul, mm. right? And that seems the opposite of I'm showing you, you know, my knickers while I'm, while I'm showing a million people my knickers while I'm twerking, right? Like it's the it's it's just diametrically opposed. <laughs> okay, uh, we have we have um, two other great. I do want to I do want to get your kind of take on on the current moment and the future because as as a kind of 
member of of the younger generation, let's say, and looking to the future, you know, you spent a little bit of this uh, Zoom, I wouldn't say bemoaning, but certainly worrying about my future and my generation's future. Um, is there any, do you see any hope in it? Totally. You know, one of the things, one of the things that I, that I perhaps Tell didn't, me. <laughs> but that I didn't articulate, right? Like I, I, the, 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 the students that I meet, right. Who are so smart, so thoughtful and so readerly, right. Like it's not, it's, you, you, it's not as though, um, it's not as though everybody has to be flattened by the, by the, um, by this, we don't have to be flattened by it, right? You, people make, people make choices, and I'm and I'm and I'm repeatedly amazed and inspired, right, by the by the choices that 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 people of your generation across the spectrum mm -hmm. are making in literary terms, but in all sorts of right in, in in all directions, and 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 it seems to me though that I guess one of the things that when I was talking about the 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 my anxiety about sort of the rebellion. I mean, I, I feel as though when when I was young, right in the eighties, that 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 in truth, probably everybody who was railing against the system was probably within the system, right? Even Gary Indy and I was, you know, he was in he was in the village, whatever, but he was in the East Village or wherever he was. But he he was he was writing the Village Voice. But it, but but it, it was still within the system in some way. Um, but it didn't feel like it. And now I think one of the things about the about the uh, about this about the social media networks and so on is that it seems that it seems it's impossible to get out of the system because if you want actually to reach anyone, right? I mean, if you think of Zemestov, right? You think of an entire generation of of Russians, of Soviet Russians, um, and well, Soviet non-Russians too, but but exchanging. Um, information with some is that, you know, that, that the, the stuff that couldn't be published and you type it up with carbon paper and, and, you know, hand it round. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think I'm curious about what that is. And maybe you can tell me, I'm curious about what serves that function today, the mm -hmm. opposite of viral, right? The opposite of viral, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that um, something that is, that is, that is, still in a, in a human and personal scale. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that I think um, in the same way that records, I, I read some headline that vinyl has, you know, vinyl sells more than CDs now, mm -hmm. right? Even though CDs are nominally the, the superior technology, but mm -hmm. people have gone back to records. I feel like in the same way, I, th I, I feel as though there is an impulse. I mean, you see, you see that impulse in things like fashion, right? Mm -hmm. in, in sort of the opposite of fast, fashion recycling repurposing mm -hmm. you know you, you see so 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 I feel you, you're going to see versions of that in 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 literary terms also mm -hmm. you know let's let's go to literary terms um just because we have a question from Eva who writes uh who are some of your favorite contemporary authors Claire. oh golly there are so many there okay. are so many I feel like I, I um uh, you know the the um I don't even know where to start I feel like read the Harper's column there um there there, there are lots of and, and, I feel, and I feel I've discovered one of the writers you know that I that I didn't um that hang on I'm just one of the books that I'm um I didn't know this writer does that come backwards to people a, a Chinese writer named yeah. uh Shuang Shui Tao I think is, um yeah and and um amazing writer a, has a whole bunch of books in Chinese, of mm. course, but um, but I think only really beginning to be translated into English. Mm -mm -mm. Um, but um, also, um, you know, is it okay, Chris? I'm giving a sneak preview of months ahead. But um, Michelle, <laughs> de Kretzer, Michelle de Kretzer is an Australian writer. I think is really wonderful, and that she has mm. a new book coming out. But um, you know, I'm 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 I, I love Jenny Erpenbeck. I love mm. I love um, Rachel Cusk. I love. Are we talking about are people supposed to be alive? Um, is Alice Monroe still alive? Alice Monroe is, you know, um, is is she hasn't written for some time, but she's one of my great um, mm. artists. Okay, this and this this gets to another question that was asked, which is uh, from Audrey, who wonders some of or who kind of says some of your characters from The Empress Children and Last Life have stayed with me for years because they were so finely drawn. Are there any particular characters from your own wide reading that have stayed with you decades later? Oh yeah, like a whole, a whole town of them. 
Okay. Um, yeah, a whole town of them. But 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 immediately maybe um, uh, uh, Zeno comes to mind. Italo Svevo's Zeno is somebody who um, who who lives with me. Um, when I when I read uh, when I read now some years ago uh, Magda Zabo's book The Door. Um, there's a character Emerence in there who um, who who is almost who's a housekeeper but almost mythical who has stayed with me. Other other characters um, you know stay with one in a slightly more unsettling you know um, Raskolnikov stays with one um, or, or, or um, you know or Humbert Humbert stays with one. Right. Um, you know there there but that's the great thing about fiction is that some of the people who stay with you um, are not people you want to hang hang out with in real life. Mm -hmm. and, and apart from your mother, Claire, who um, I kind of mentioned this is Dalloway in passing in, in my introduction, but which kind of characters were you thinking about when you were writing Alice Armstrong? Um, you know, uh, I, I suppose I was um, thinking about a whole generation, as I said, a generation mm -hmm. of, 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 of women in life, of sort of bourgeois mm -hmm. women. Um, but I, but I also, uh, and I think somebody, you know, I certainly had in mind a, a little echo of Catherine Mansfield. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I had, I mean, that, not specific characters, but that sort of world, um, there was a sort of nod to, um, to that. Um, and, uh, but, but I think, you know, I, I think there's a whole, not Alice Armstrong per se, but I, I live always speaking of sort of characters. I live with a, with a whole um, host of, so, so I've written in, my mom, my mom was a huge reader and she was a huge reader. Like she had every Virago book from, this, from the time Virago started. So I grew up in a house reading books that I thought everybody read, but then I only learned later, later they didn't. So I grew up reading Jean Reese and Barbara Pym and, and Muriel Spark and, and Molly Keene and Elizabeth Taylor and you know all of these um, wonderful writers. Um, and, and then I, and I thought everybody read them. And then I didn't only realized later that they didn't. So, but I would say the, the degree to which all of those, the work of all those writers and their characters are sort of macerated in me, like, you know, like um, mulch and, and kind of looking, coming out somehow. I, you know, it's, uh, they're, they're there, they're there. I will say the experience of reading this book is, is nicer than, than stomping around in mulch. <laughs> <laughs> much, much nicer. Thank okay, you. A final, a final question from um, Michaela, who uh, is, is, is from Sydney, but she is living in New York now. And she wonders um, what you make of the differences between Australian and American literature and the differences between the two cultures in general. Claire. Wow, that's, you know, golly. I, 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 I have to, I, that's a really great question. I feel like I'd have to think, um, properly about it um you know there are these there there are australian writers who are in my sort of personal cosmos or or, or, or firmament you know whom i adore and um you know peter carey is is mm -hmm. one and helen garner is another and peter carey and helen garner are really very different writers um so so um and 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 and, and how do they how does that um how does it compare um I, I i don't i don't know i don't know i mean i i feel it's almost like a, a, a an essence i was there was there was a moment when I, at the beginning i was going to say oh maybe it's it's that the american culture is fundamentally so macho but of course australian culture can be quite macho too so it's not that um so i yeah i don't i don't i don't know mm. i don't know more, maybe more reflections for another another, another book event <laughs> that will inevitably be on Zoom. <laughs> um, Claire and Chris, let me get you back on here, get you to unmute. Hello. Hello and thank Hello. you. <laughs> Hello, goodbye and thank you. Um, thank you so much for being with us, uh, both of you this evening. Um, I've posted links to Chris's new book, The Index, the Index of Self-Destruction, Self-Destructive Acts in the chat as well as the link to buy Claire's novella, which I highly recommend. I imagine, Chris, you also highly I recommend. Do. It is I such do. a joy I to me. It is and like I, I highly recommend Chris's novel. I just want to. Thank you. <laughs>